To replace the plugs and coils, you're going to need to firstly safely raise and support the vehicle, as well as remove the rear bumper and the intercooler console. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with those tasks. Once that's done, remove the 13mm heat shield nuts, green arrows, which hold the heat shield to the frame rail. On the passenger side of the car, there is a ground strap, yellow arrow. Well, in here, I usually like to clean the ground contact points and make sure it's nice and tight. Now pull the heat shield off of the car. It's usually a little tight. I recommend pulling it off of the studs, green arrows, and then tilt it upwards, red arrow, and pull forward, yellow arrow, and away from the frame rail. Remove the two 10mm bolts, green arrows, that hold the second heat shield onto the valve cover. Then slide this cover down and out of the way. You may not be able to remove that heat shield from the car, and this is just fine. Just slide it down and out of your way. These heat shields have a little wire holder on them for the oxygen sensor harness, yellow arrow, and on the driver's side for the vacuum hose that controls the wastegate. Make sure these are in place, and if not, replace them. I believe they are available separately from the heat shield. Slide the rubber dust boots off of the electrical connector. Then release the electrical connector from the coil by pressing the release lever, yellow arrows, and pulling the connector out of the coil, green arrows. Remove the bolts for the coils, green arrows, using your 5mm hex socket. Then pull the coils out of the cylinder head. Here you can also see the clip for the oxygen sensor, yellow arrow, and the positioning of the heat shield in its out of the way position. It is smart to replace the valve lift control bracket and o-ring for the valve lift solenoid red arrow while here. Please follow the link provided for an article and video on valve lift solenoid replacement. Once the coils are removed, check this area for cracks all the way around the body of the coil. Here you can see a crack in one of the coils we removed from our 996 Turbo S. As always, you should be wearing eye protection, and if you're not, put it on now. Clean the area around the spark plugs with compressed air and brake spray before removing the spark plugs. Remove the spark plugs, green arrow, using your extension and a spark plug socket. Installation is the reverse of removal. I recommend when installing new plugs to put the new plug in the socket and with your extension attached, spin the spark plug to the left until you feel the threads click. Then start to thread the plug in. This will help you set the threads up more closely before beginning to tighten and may prevent from cross-threading your spark plug threads. Porsche has recently updated the coil design. For the most part, it is a direct replacement. You get longer bolts with the new coils because of the shape of the new style body requires the use of longer bolts. Here is a picture of the new style coil, green arrow, next to the old style coil, yellow arrow. There was only one snag in our coil update. Cylinder number four, the passenger side furthest towards the rear of the car, required a slight modification. The torque head of the bolt rubbed on the heat shield when I bolted the heat shield back on. So I used a standard hex bolt, green arrow, that does not stick out as far as the torque bolt. They are otherwise of the same length as the torque bolt. With the added clearance of the bolt head and the installed spacer, it did not rub. In this photo, it shows two 6mm flat stacked washers, yellow arrow, but I later found a fat 6mm washer, which was the same as the two stacked. Either way works. I used a little bit of grease to let the washer stick to the valve cover to aid in assembly. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.